Hello, hello, you guys. It's me, Tiffany Roth, and welcome to this week's episode of Tiffany Talks. I am so excited to have Jill Schultz here today. Um, she is an entrepreneur, a disruptor, an author, and a speaker, and she is creating a movement. She's creating a movement that, you know, sometimes it's uncomfortable to, um, whenever movements start, there's this, mm, this edge of this uncomfortable. So she's so brave and it's her mission to help people release from shame that's related to sexual trauma and secrets, shame and secrets. So she is brave enough to come on Tiffany Talks. You know, the show was created for everyday people to be able to live extraordinary lives. And so I'm bringing like just voices like Jill's on here, because there might be just one person out there who is just suffering in silence. And so Jill is going to speak out on her experience and she's writing a book and she's just so open and vulnerable. And so she's gonna share that her experience of sexual trauma herself led to her acting out with other children at a young age. And she now speaks out on this topic and she encourages um, anyone to, who has a secret in their life or has felt any kind of shame in their life um, to speak out. So Jill, without further ado, welcome to Tiffany oh Talks. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you, Tiffany. It's so great to be sharing this space with you. Yes. I really appreciate it. Yes, yes. So tell us about your story because I know, you know, she and I met at a book writing conference. We're both writing books yeah. and um, she told me her story and I was like, wow. So again, what, what's, what's going on? What happened? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was drawn to you from the minute I saw you, I saw you sitting over in the corner and <laughs> I get, to, I get to meet her. Yeah. And so I, hundred percent believe in divine intervention and know that you and I were supposed to meet so that, you know, we get to create the space for people to heal. Cause everybody has a secret, you know, yours may not be attached to sexual trauma. Mine is, mm -hmm. but everybody has a secret and we want to unhook you from that secret that's holding you back. So, um, yeah, my story is, you know, I, I was three or four years old the first time. Well, actually, I don't know how many times it happened. I don't remember who molested me. I just knew that I knew too much at a very young age mm. for it not to have happened. And so, um, I'm so grateful that women have such a platform these days to talk about sexual abuse and sexual trauma, mm -hmm. but what people aren't talking about is my story. And that's the little kids who innocently and curiously act out with other children because of what somebody taught them to do. Mm -hmm. And I lived with this dark cloud of shame over my head for 41 years, because wow. I thought I was the only little girl who ever did that. Mm. And it's way more common than people think. So I want to, I want to say right now, um, sorry, my nose itches. Give me one second. Mm -hmm. I just have a tickle. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Um, perfectly imperfect people. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I'm able to share this story now without being as emotional as I used to be like three months ago, I'd be sobbing, telling the story mm. and I don't want you to think that I'm being glib about how I'm sharing it. If this is your story, I want you to know that I see you and I feel you. And I want you to know that there's a space created for you right now to just breathe and be like, do you swear on here, Tiffany? Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> Fuck. That's okay. my story. Like, and I can't believe this girl is just saying it, like how she's saying it right now. Yeah. But I also I have a question though, because yeah, yeah. Happen, really, you know, when you, sometimes you hear things and you don't really hear them, <laughs> like you're like, what? So what you're saying is that the experiences that you had from abuse at a young time, you don't know, remember when. I don't remember who. At some point you started mm -hmm. abusing other children. I, yeah. I started acting out sexually with other kids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it took me a very long time to realize that I was a kid acting out. Like I viewed myself as mm -hmm. an adult yes. acting out with children, which was 
you know, I'm sure 99% of the, the level of shame that I had because of that was because I viewed myself in an adult's mind acting out with other kids. But in all reality, I was a little kid too. I was just doing yes. what somebody else taught me to do. So, yeah. So for, thank you so much for presencing that, because I think that's what happens when you're so young and you're taught like adult things, your mind matures in one area so much faster than it would normally. So you see yourself differently. And I always say children learn what they live. Absolutely. They learn what they live. So at what age did you, did you start that? And then did you start feeling shame? Did you know it was wrong or like, cause I'm speaking to all the little people out there. Like some yeah. of the kids, they have, you know, like they just have feelings or, you know, they don't know what to do with that. And it's just play. And then it's another step where you know, cause what I'm hearing from you is that you knew it wasn't right, but you did it anyway. I think so when I, when I was acting out, I was in between, I think I was in between seven and about 12 years old mm -hmm. when it stopped. And I think in my book, it's amazing to me, people who have similar stories to mine because I have people that are sharing their stories mm -hmm. around what their experiences were. And there's this innate level of shame around it without even knowing that it's wrong. There's this mm -hmm. innate level of shame or shame around it. So, um, yeah, I mean, do you think it could have come from that? You know, you think it could have come from how you felt when it was done to you? And, and you know what, nobody's ever framed it like that, but I imagine that that could be a possibility too, knowing that this is not right. Don't do this to me. I'm a defenseless child, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. So that's like, that's where you, you took the act with the emotion, like your initial emotion as a young child, like not having the language, you know, you know, I do a lot of work in my leadership course, a mindset makeover about things that happen when people were young and you don't have the words, the wisdom in order to work through it. So, you, you know, you have your emotions and you have your actions, but not your intellect. So, yeah, yeah so I'm hearing that that's what happened. And then, so when, when that happened, what did the other kids say? Like, what happened? Was it a secret between you guys? Did the parents ever find out? Like, what, what happened there? I really would rather not go into all the other stuff with the other kids. It's kind of something that I'm still keeping close to my heart out of respect for everybody involved. Mm -hmm. So um, I'd rather stay away from a question like that, if you okay. don't mind. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, so, so then when you... You say you were around 12 years old. We think it stopped. What happened? I got caught. Mm. I will share that. I got caught. And it was, you know, I don't blame my parents for how they reacted because nobody was having these conversations 41 mm. years ago. There was no Absolutely support. Absolutely not. No there was no right. support. So, <laughs> you know, I think that that... I, and, and, you know, I'm, I'm doing a course right now. Uh, I'm creating a course. And one of the questions that I'm asking people is for them to pinpoint that one point in their life where that's when it happened. That's when they decided who they were and what worth they had. And that was the moment for me that little Jill created this story around self-loathing mm. and uh, shame and, you know, I don't, I, I've, there's two areas of my three areas of my life that I've struggled because of what happened. One, I was bulimic until I was 41 years old, mm. which was uh, one of the reasons why I, for the second time said, I need to get back into therapy. I need to get this under control. Mm -hmm. um, but in love and in um, business are the other two areas that this has really affected me in my life. Mm -hmm. And when that little 12 year old got caught and it happened the way that it happened, I decided then that I never wanted anybody to see me. Mm. I, didn't, I thought, Oh my God, how could a man love me if he knew what I did? Like I thought I was a monster. And now I get to say, how could a man not love me? Yeah. Knowing what I've gone through and you know, where I get to, what I get to do now and how I get to help people. How can a man not love me? 
Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Like you said, everybody has a secret. Everybody has a story, Jill, and you're being so courageous here. I see you. I see you. And I know it's not easy, but there's some little girl out there or boy who's 12 years old and going, oh my God, I'm not alone. Or a woman in her fifties. Yeah. Oh my God. That's my story. That's how, that's the reason why. Mm -hmm. So what I'm really trying to do is collapse time for people. Let people know that they're not alone. You know, I thought I was the only little girl doing that kind of stuff until I was in my fifties or my forties. I'm sorry. You know, let me ask you a question though. So what at 12, so then how did it just stop? Like from the shame or like, how did you, what happened? Well, I got caught, but I'm, what I've experienced in writing my book and Uh all the people in my, in my book, it's around that age that it stops. So I don't know if it's just at an age that they mature enough to go, oh, this is wrong. I don't know when, if it's when they, if that's the age that people start doing sex ed in school, I I can't remember, but it's, it's very common in all the people that I've interviewed. It's that age that it stops. Wow. Yeah. And then, so it stops, but then when did your behavior, you said you were bulimic, when did that start? That didn't start till I was in high school. Mm. And a friend of mine told me about it. And so I was like, oh, this is, this is great. <laughs> I can eat whatever I want, you know? Um, and that lasted for years and years and years. Like I was probably 17 when I started doing that. And to do that until I was 41 years old. Wow. And what was interesting, the day, like I said, that time that I went and saw that therapist, I went because I, because I was bulimic. I'm like, you need to get this under control. You're 41 years old and you're still throwing up. Mm -hmm. And the day that I walked into his office was the last day that I ever did that. And I don't know, I felt some sort of accountability towards him. Like I wanted him to be proud of me for some Mm -hmm. reason. And I'm like, I can't, I can't continue to do this. It was an interesting dynamic. Yeah. It's so interesting. I'm listening to you right now. I'm thinking like when you hold all that stuff in that it wants to come out. And so that throwing up have been like throwing up all the guilt and the shame and you're not really dealing with but you know your body like I said your body acts out your emotions act out before your intellect catches up and then when when that happened for you like intellectually you had the support you needed to understand like that you have that holistic mind body connection you were able to shift yeah. And it's so- also around control too, mm. because I was able to control and I had heard, um, recently, and I, I'm so sorry that I don't remember but it was one of the shootings mm-hmm. they have, they have found out that several of the, the kids or I guess adults now that were around for that shooting bulimia is a huge, um, uh, like aftermath of what they went through because they're controlling what they're doing with their body. Wow. Yeah. Also the emotions though, what I'm hearing is like to get that, like that, emo, that trauma of letting go, Yeah, like, you know, letting go of the trauma because like kids don't have the tools. Yeah. They don't have the tools. Like you said, nobody's talking about it. Yeah. That's why I'm so proud of you for talking about it right now. I'm really proud Thank of you, you for talking about it because Thank like you. somebody's going to see this. So like your journey from 12 years old to getting caught, then what happened? Like, what would you tell your 12 year old self or someone who's watching this? Yeah. Well, I, it's interesting because I, I fell in love at a very young age Mm -hmm. with my first love and, and he showed up when I was around 14 years old and I don't, I know people say first loves are, you know, everybody has them, but there was something very special about him Mm -hmm. and he passed away when we were around 19 years old. And I really believe he's my angel. Like, I I know he's one of my angels now. Like, I really think he was put in my life to pour love into me at that age. But then I would go, I would go years without having sex. Like one time I went 14 years without having sex. You know, that was at the point where I was like, I didn't want anybody to see me. I didn't want to be, you know, how can a man love me? You know, so that was the first time I went to therapy was because I wasn't connecting with men. I was about 33 years old. And I, I knew that I would like, I, I, I'd walk into a bar or in a room and a man would look at me and I'd immediately look down. 
Wow. I did not want anyone to see into this soul, you know? So that was the first time that I went to therapy was because I wasn't, I knew that I wasn't connecting with men. So, um, and you know, it's been a roller coaster. I've, I've done landmark education and I did landmark when I was doing my first therapy and it's sped up my therapy by a thousand times, you know, mm-hmm. really, have you done landmark? No, uh, uh-uh. I, have I, you done hardcore. Have you done leadership? Yes, uh-huh. Okay. Hardcore. So landmark is hardcore is like landmark on crack. So it's a, yeah. it's more intense. Um, right. Yeah. So I, I did that together. And then, you know, even I'm 55 years old and I am finally ready for that person to come into my life. And yeah. I know he's so close. Like I can feel him. He is coming. Oh my um, goodness. You're you ready. Know, what's That's, that? You're ready. I'm so you ready. You get to be ready first. That's what like, like the work that you've done. You get to be ready first. Yeah. Well, I didn't love myself until I was 51 years old. Wow. You know, because I was so ashamed of what I did when I was little mm-hmm. that I just, yeah. And, and I actually hardcore, the leadership program is where I got my healing around. Yes. That. That's where yes. I got to love myself for the hardcore first time. Hardcore is amazing. Give myself. Permission, no guilt, no shame, no fault, no blame. So when you guys have that in your life and something has happened, that is something that happened. It doesn't define who you are. No. No, this is something no. that happened. Yeah. And now what's the name of your book? Well, that's a great question because it was a name and now it's not. My uh-huh. publisher does not like it. Uh-huh. So um, it's uh, it was unshamed, undashed shamed, but they have told me no. So we are in the process of coming up with a name, but I am, if you don't mind, I am doing a pre-sale and we do have a link for oh, the book. Oh, yeah, of course. And it still says unshamed for the pre-sale that I'll make sure that you get. So for right now, it's unshamed, but it's it's a work in progress. It's so a work in progress. I love, I love some tips. It is not my gift. Like I'm not uh, really with creative things like that. And how long, did, how long did you take? Was that like sort of a cathartic experience for you writing the book? What made you decide to write it? Oh my gosh. So God decided this gets to be my purpose in life. And Mm -hmm. because I told you I was praying for it. And when I finally stepped into it, I reached out to a really good friend of mine who is a international speaker. And all I wanted to do was get on stage. Like I'm on stage with Tony Robbins talking about this. I wanted to shout it from the rooftops. Yes. And he said, if you want to be on stage, you got to write a book. And I'm like, I don't want to write a fucking Mm -hmm. book. Now I've written a book. So, yes. you know, I don't yes. know. Okay, let me give you a moment. I'm going to give you a moment. I'm sorry. You're on stage right now. Yeah. You have two minutes. What do you want to say? Oh my gosh. I just want to say that I am so grateful that I get the opportunity to look at my trauma as a gift. You're going to make me cry. I just want to help people. I just want to collapse the time for you. Mm. I just want you to know that you get to be loved. Mm. You get to love yourself. You get to forgive yourself. Mm. And you get to live a fucking magnificent life. Yes. Because everything on your heart is yours to have. Mm. And I want you to have that. Beautiful. I haven't cried for a while. (laughs) You made me cry. And it's cleansing. And it's cleansing. It's cleansing. I love that you said collapse time. Yeah. Because uh, if you don't work through the trauma, it just stays and stays and stays. And then months and years go by and it's still there. And you're wondering like, what's going on? You keep uh, sourcing the same situation, sourcing the same complications, sourcing the same relationships. You get to do that for yourself. Now, I know your story is different because uh, you're talking about how, and I don't want to, I, I don't want to have this conversation without talking about the little girl who was abused. Yeah. So we can't have this, we can't have this conversation with talking about her. Yeah. You know, I, and, blamed, and, I figured out I blamed her for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. There I is. just figured that out like six months ago. Yes. Yes. And, 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 and talk that through. Yeah. So I 
I, um, and it, you know, obviously you and I have done the transformational work and it's the best work that you can ever do. And if you have something hard in your life, fucking look at it and face mm -hmm. it head on mm -hmm. because that's what I had to do, you know? So it was, I was doing the PhD program, which is the advanced course of leadership. And mm -hmm. one of the exercises was, I finally got to look at her and realize that she's the one that's been driving the bus the whole time. Like mm -hmm. she has been carrying this weight of all of my shame and instead of me loving her and yeah. saying it's okay and I you know it wasn't your fault I realized I was like how could you let that happen to yourself mm. yeah that was a huge breakthrough for me wow yeah wow. and what would you tell her now Oh, little girl, you just get to relax. You get to, you get to have the best ride of your life right now because we get to create the most beautiful life that we deserve. Mm -hmm. And you just get to go for the ride. That's right. That's right. So for all of you out there who might resonate with Jill's story, I want you to, I want you to address that little person inside of you and say, you know what? This is not your fault. Mm. You, you, this is not your fault. You are, and this, because it happened to you, it's not who you are. Yep. Things happen all the time. And sometimes we attach meaning to those things. And, and, it, and that meaning doesn't serve you if it's guilt or shame or blame. Like, so everybody to their little girl or boy, look in the mirror and say, not your fault. Yeah. I love you. I love you. I love you. Yeah. I love you. And you deserve the best that life has to offer. You deserve it because you were born. Not because you do something good or bad. You just deserve it. Jill. Yes. You deserve it. I know. So I need that now. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So um, the book that doesn't have a name, we yes. will put the link in the description. Maybe that's the name. <laughs> we'll put the link in the description box. Right now it's Unshamed. Yeah. And I'm so looking forward to reading it. We'll probably have you back on. If you guys want to get a pre-order of the book, there's going to be a link in the description box. Now, what if they just wanted to follow you on Instagram or YouTube? Are you on social media at all? I am. I am. I'm Jill E. Schultz 11 on Insta. And I think I'm, I, I, so I have a wine business too. I'm Jill, the wine girl on some of them. Uh, We're in the middle of a rebrand right now, but I do have a Facebook group uh -huh. for people who are like me and want to just connect with other people. And it's living unshamed, unbashed shamed. Yeah. So if you want to come into the group and, and, you know, get loved up. I will say this is not a place for people who are in victim though. This is a place where people are taking responsibility for their life and they want to live powerfully. Mm -hmm. So they get to come there and be in their power um, and be with other like-minded individuals. So. Mm. Okay. So you made that distinction and, and what she's talking about is like, it's, it's a very big distinction about the things that happen in life. Some people look at things that everything, this happened to me and that happened to me and that happened to me and then this happened to me. And, then, and when all of those things happen to you and you're a victim, what do we know about victim? It's you get nothing done. You're powerless. <laughs> like, you're yeah, powerless. powerless. Yeah. You're powerless to change anything. So as long as you look at everything is happening to you, you're powerless. Yeah. So if you look at your life, and I always say that time collapses, right? It's not linear. Like right now, we're, we could be at different time zones and across the world is different time zones. So it's not linear, right? So everything happens for you. So when you empower yourself, like you have done, Jill, with your story, with honesty and authenticity, and you can see that happen, that happened for that little girl, but that's not that little girl right? It happened for her, but it's not her, the thing that yeah. happened, right? Yeah. And so you're inviting people into your circle that realize that, hey, you know what? This is something in my life, but I'm so much more than that. Yeah. Yeah. We get to take responsibility. You don't get to take responsibility for what happened to you, but you get to take responsibility for where you are right now. And yeah. you get to decide 
that that does not hold power over you anymore. Mm -hmm. And you get to step into who you're supposed to be Mm -hmm. and what life you get to have. Wow. So beautiful. So beautiful. And so for you, it was a study in leadership that allows you to find that voice. What would you recommend to someone who's just like, oh, I'm scared and I want to talk about this, but I don't want to join my Facebook group. Like that's going to be a community where you get to get it out. Um, I'm actually doing what I'm calling a fireside chat. Mm. I don't know when this is going to be airing. So um, it's, you're probably airing a couple months out. I don't know how, Mm -hmm. but I'm I'm doing a fireside chat on May 25th and people get to come and, uh, you know, we're going to be doing some exercises on how to release whatever your secret is and then stepping into your power. So really, really excited about that. I love that. Let's try and get this out before that so you can get everybody to come. Okay. I love that. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that this inspired you to know that you're not alone. I hope that this inspired you to know that if something happened in your life, it doesn't define who you are, what you're capable of. I hope that it gave you that inkling of liberation to be like, oh, I can let it go, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I and then get myself, I can love myself. Yes, yes. So do you want to give some little words of wisdom for closing? You know, I, you know, just what I said, um, it, this was a dark cloud over my head for so many years. And I really was like, I had a dark cloud over my head. And when I finally got the courage and the bravery Mm. to look at it and say, okay, I get to deal with this now. The cloud's not there anymore. I Mm -hmm. look for the cloud and Mm -hmm. I'm like, where's my cloud The cloud's not there anymore. And now I know because I was brave and courageous and because I looked at it and, and, healed from it life is so beautiful on the other side and i know it's scary af it's scary af i've done it life is so beautiful on the other side come join me on the other side yes yes and it's just just so that you guys know what i'm going to say is that we were in this event and we started talking and she openly and vulnerably shared her story um, you guys, authenticity is so enrolling. So when I, I was able to, those eyes, those beautiful eyes, I could look into those beautiful eyes and see this soul because she wasn't hiding. Okay, so when you're vulnerable, when you're open, when you're authentic with your story, she led with the story. I was like, whoa, she's so brave, right? Let me invite her on the show. How courageous so is that? How courageous is that, you guys? So lead with your story. And then all of a sudden, it's not going to be holding that cloud over you. Like you said, it's been holding a cloud over you because you're trying to keep it in, <laughs> getting it out. You All these ways you're getting it out. And now you have, you're free. Yeah. Free. At least find one person to talk to or write it down. Like mm. write it down. Like you're terrified that somebody's going to see it and yeah. then shred it. Like yeah. start with that. Yeah. Okay. That's good. That's good. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Jill. It's been an honor having you on the show. I'm just so grateful. You guys, please look in the description box, pre-order her book. These authors, her and I, we need support, you guys. We need support because sometimes being courageous enough to tell your story that you really want to believe that people care enough to read it. So make sure you check it out. Check her out on Facebook and she's going to be doing that fireside chat and um, you get to be free. You get to be free and you get to be loved. 